All right, let's talk about geometric optics. Geometric optics is going to be dealing with how light interacts with the environment. We're going to be talking about things like mirrors, reflection, refraction, lenses. So, um, first, the ray model of light. We're going to treat light as a ray or as an arrow, um, which in reality it's not. In fact, light in this, exam in this scenario will be treated as a wave, and the ray is a line that would be perpendicular to the wave. So if you can think of a wave um, rippling away in a pond of water, you might get wave fronts. And a light ray is an arrow perpendicular to those wave, wave fronts. It's just something that we use to model light because it helps us understand how light interacts with the environment. Just understand it doesn't actually travel that way. Now, <clears throat> we can see light, we can see objects in one of two ways. We can see light as a, or an object as a source of light, like a candle or the sun or light bulb. Light will be leaving it, and as a result, you can see the object. Or you can see light or objects via reflection. Light will come in from some outside source, maybe the sky or um, you know light bulb. It'll hit the object, it'll then bounce off the object, and then get to our eyes. So we can see this apple, for example, because light reflected off of it, not because it was a source. So you're, you have sources, and then you have objects that are seen via reflection. So let's understand the law of reflection. Really straightforward law. The angle of reflection that the ray makes with the normal line to the surface must always equal the angle of incidence. It's really important that you really uh, really understand what th this is saying. It's saying the light ray comes in, we're going to call it incident. The light ray comes in, so there might be a source of light out here. It comes incident to the surface, and then it will reflect off of that surface. And the angle in which it was incident is always measured from the normal line, or the line perpendicular to the surface. And the reflected ray is always going to be also drawn normal and they're going to equal each other. So the area shown is correct. This angle, whilst there is an angle here, uh, it is not the angle that we're going to use as our incident angle. Uh, keep that in mind. They might give you this angle, and they'll, they'll, maybe they'll say a lay, ray of light is 60 degrees to the surface. The reflected ray, then, for would be 30 degrees, because the incident ray is technically going to be that 90 minus the 60. This is important because sometimes surfaces aren't flat. That's why we always pick the normal line. And that'll come into play right over here. We have two clear types of reflection. We have uh, specular reflection. And that's the kind of reflection where you actually see the image in the material itself. So a smooth surface, glass is specular reflection. A really calm pond is specular reflection. Um, it's shiny metal. Anything smooth, you'll see the image in the material. And this is because the light rays that come incident on that surface will reflect such that they maintain the same orientation. So you'll see these blue turquoiseous arrows are all parallel to each other. The red ones are the reflected ray, and they're also still parallel. They maintain the same direction. Then you have diffuse reflection which is anything that's really not smooth, and that's where the rays come in uh, in the same orientation perhaps, but then they reflect in a different orientation. And this is because it's bumpy and hilly, and if uh, you were to look at each surface, the normal line at each spot will be a completely different direction, and thus the reflected arrow is completely different than maybe a different location. Now, don't think that means diffuse reflection, you don't see anything. It's actually quite the opposite. It really turns out that everything you see, if you don't see an image in it, it's because of diffuse reflection. So if you look at another person, you see them because light is bouncing off of them, but you don't see a tree uh, on them or the light bulb itself on them because light is bouncing off of them in many different spots. So you see light, you see them, but you don't see an image within them. Um, specular is actually what's more rare. It's where you actually see an image. So if you were to <clears throat> shine up a surface or smooth up a surface quite great amount, maybe you put some sort of wax or a buffer on there, you'll start to see an image in there. That's where it's more spec. So if we take a look at um, these two images, 
um, we have a flower reflected on a smooth surface, the pond below it. You see that flower pretty clearly. This is much more close to specular than it is to diffuse. Whereas over here, you're still going to get reflection. You see kind of the flower in the pond, but the pond is no longer smooth. This is much closer to diffuse reflection. You can definitely have you know, a semi-specular surface, which this might be closer to. You can still make out the flower, but it's just not clear, so it's closer to diffuse. A plane mirror is going to be specular reflection. And there's a few things you do need to understand that when you look in a plane mirror, uh, you see something that appears to be behind the mirror. You know, if you were to label this as the light side, this is where light is. This is dark. There's no light over here. There might be a wall here. There might be, like, literally nothing over here or you know, the next room that you're... You know, your bedroom or something, if your bathroom is what we're talking about. And um, this is because of the way our eyes think the light rays existed to come from. You know, I'm going to give a better breakdown on the next slide, but if you look at this, you know, light will leave this person in many, many different ways. It really is infinite possibility where the light rays go. But at least one of them will approach this mirror in the orientation provided. It's going to bounce off that mirror via the law of reflection. But your eyes don't know it bounced, so it traces the ray back to where it thinks it came from. So it thinks it came from back here. There's really an infinite number of these rays, and we can have an infinite number of lines that will easily trace out the actual image. So if we have a ton of different rays, we can trace out where the person is. And you'll notice a few things with plain mirrors um, that you might not get with all kinds of mirrors. And we'll talk about that in a moment.